I often get asked by people, mostly on my Instagram, to critique their videos, to kind of give them quick pointers of things that they can do to improve their videos, make them more interesting, more appealing for their viewers. And instead of individually replying to each and every person that has asked me this question, I figured it might be more beneficial to give you a quick rundown of things that you need to be careful about, you need to know about, and things that you can incorporate in your workflow to make your videos much better, especially if you're still a beginner drone pilot. Let's check it out. Starting out first with a mistake that I see a lot of people do, which is to try too hard to make their videos look interesting. And you can easily tell that, uh, but I personally believe simple is good, especially when it comes to drone cinematography, I'm not saying that complex shots are not amazing because they most certainly are, but they're mostly reserved for very advanced pilots who can execute those movements in a very dynamic but also smooth way so they don't take away from the actual storytelling aspect of your video. If you try too hard to make those shots and you know all people can see is your jerky movements and your shaky hands uh, and the end result is not smooth at all, then what's the point of doing that? I personally believe simple is good when it comes to camera drone cinematography because drone shots are meant to be an addition to the story. Uh, you can see that in many commercials, in many movies, in many TV shows, drone shots are mostly very simple and they just add to the whole story. Now, of course, if you're only shooting drone footage, you don't want to only have a very simple and boring shots in your footage, but I think you get my point. Simple is good, and especially when executed smoothly. Now, on the same topic of flying smoothly in a simple way, a simple shot that requires your drone to just cover a large distance uh, is not going to be interesting by your viewer. So in case you want to avoid boring your, your audience and your viewers, a speed ramp might be the better way to go instead of posting the whole 30 second flight of you going from one point to another, why not just make that shot two seconds and just use a speed ramp to showcase the movement of the drone, but showcase just a quick move from point A to point B. That's a lot more dynamic. Of course, it doesn't work every single time in every single scenario because speed ramps are kind of aggressive and it really depends how you incorporate that in your footage. But for me, speed ramps are a must for just going away from that boring movement that takes ages. You, you just want to see what's coming next. You don't want to keep looking at a 30 second shot that's doing nothing for you. So to avoid that, speed ramps and those speed ramps I personally use are very quick ones. I don't like the, the slow speed ramps, if you get what I mean. So instead of speeding up my footage two or four times, I like to speed up my footage maybe 16 times. So it's a lot quicker and that that whole transition from point A to, to point B doesn't take five seconds, it takes 0 0.5 seconds. So you get the point, you're ready for the shot, you're ready for the next shot, and you're still intrigued by what's coming next. The next tip I have for you is to use the advantages of your drone. And the biggest advantage that your drone gives you is perspectives. So use different perspectives, use the variety of the different angles that you can achieve with your drone and use them to your advantage because this is the only way to capture so many different angles. You can use a bird's eye view, you can use a low flying shot, reveal shot, orbit shot, so many different shots that you can incorporate in your footage and there are so many different ideas depending on what type of mood, what type of emotion, what type of feeling you want to provoke in the viewer that you're trying to reach. Tip number four is if you have a drone that has more than one camera, such as the DJI Air 3, for example, or the Mavic 3, Mavic 3 Pro, take advantage of these cameras. I see so many people and I had so many comments on my reviews for these drones saying, yeah, these cameras are kind of like a gimmick. I don't like them. I personally feel terrible when I read comments like these because 
they couldn't be further away from the truth. The different focal lengths that these cameras have give you a completely different look for your footage. And especially if you combine that with my previous tips that I gave you, you will have even more variety in your shots. Personally, one way that I love shooting with my drone is by using the 7X camera on the Mavic 3 Pro, which is a telephoto camera, zooms in a whole lot, and it's nothing like the regular wide angle shot that the drone gives you that everyone is used to nowadays. So by using this, not only you're getting some amazing parallax effect when you're orbiting around the subject, you can also take advantage of filming something that is really far away without actually having to go there, especially if it's something that is uh, an off-fly zone that you don't have access to or is an object that is really far away that is forbidden to fly around. Or in my case, I came across a stork nest, which I really didn't want to bother. I was super far away, more than 100 meters away, and the mother stork didn't even notice the drone, of course, and I really didn't want to bother not her, not the little ones, anyone. Uh, and I made it happen because of that camera. So it was really worth it. And it was really interesting for me to, to see how she protects the little ones and keeps them in shade, um, makes a shade for them. Uh, and it was about 32 degrees Celsius, which I think is about 90 or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was really, really hot around. Uh, it was about noon time and you know, everyone was looking for shade. So uh, it was an interesting shot that I was able to capture by taking advantage of what the drone has and what it can give me in terms of different camera characteristics, different camera focal lengths. And this tip ties very well with my final tip, which is to always bring your drone with you because you never know what you're going to capture. The last story with the mother stork uh, was a great example of this tip and why it's important because I have always wanted to capture a stork nest while it's full, while, while it has uh, the big mother stork and the little ones inside. But every single time I came across a stork nest, I never had my drone with me or I never had a um, drone with different focal lengths with different cameras and of course I wouldn't film something like this from a close distance because I don't want to bother the the birds uh, so that's the reason why I am so happy that I brought my Mavic 3 Pro with me in this case in this scenario and to be honest some of my best shots that I've captured recently have been by chance. I've never planned them. I never thought I would capture this. And this guy here is another good example. I was packing my things, getting ready to go home after shooting a completely different video. But then I saw this guy on a hydrofoil surf and then I immediately put the drone in the air and captured these shots and I'm super happy for that. And this is just one example of so many different ones that, uh, you know, just goes to show that you never know when you're going to, to get a chance to capture something interesting that you always wanted to capture. So a good advice for me is to always have your drone ready next to you so you can start flying straight away. And that's pretty much it from today's video. If you found those tips valuable, please let me know by clicking on the like button and drop a comment down below. And if you didn't find them helpful, that's also fine. Let me know regardless by clicking on the dislike button and dropping a comment below. That's also important for me. I want to hear back from you. And of course, your input and feedback is always appreciated here on this channel. So looking forward to hearing back from you down in the comments. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching all the way through. This is Mike from Drone Supremacy. I'll catch you in the next video very, very soon. Take care and goodbye.